Welcome to Snowball AI. Today I am excited to share the process on how I create consistent characters using the latest Mi Journey feature, which I've been looking forward to for a long time. My first video on this channel was about Mi Journey and character consistency. In this video I will try the new character reference feature to create a few illustrations including the same character with similar appearances across multiple images. So if you're new to this, character consistency has been a huge issue when using generative AI because of the AI models nature to give random results even if you write a detailed description of a character there are multiple ways to work around that and I've made a lot of videos about that myself creating children's books and stories using the same character in different angles and poses in my opinion me journey is by far the best AI model for generating images and now we'll see if we can get the same character in different images using this new anticipated feature I'm really excited to try it out so let's start by reading the announcement and learn how to use it. It says Mi Journey is testing a new character reference feature which is similar to the style reference feature that we got a month ago. Style reference was awesome and it made it easier to keep the same style across various images simply by using an image as reference. So you could use this image of Van Gogh and then write a panda on a bike and get this. Now the character reference should work in the same way and to use it we need to write dash dash CREF followed by an image of our character. We can also modify the reference strength by typing dash dash CW which stands for character weight and choose a number between 100 and 0. So the default is 100 if you don't change the character weight and it says here that it replicates the face, hair and even the clothes. If you however set it to 0 it will just focus on the face. This is good for changing outfits, hair and adding accessories to our characters. Down here they give us some extra tips and mention that it's not designed for real people or photos and it works best when using characters made from Mi Journey. However it's not able to copy everything. If there is a certain logo on a t-shirt it will probably not give you the exact details in the new image you create. This works for both Niji and normal Mi Journey models and can also be combined with the style reference feature that I talked about earlier which makes it a perfect fit for creating stories and a series of images with the same style and now hopefully with the same character as well. We'll get into that in a bit. One last thing which is also important to know is that the new character reference can also be used to draw inspiration from and use multiple images as reference which means if we want to create an image of our character where she is facing away from us then it's important to not only show one image of her face instead you should upload multiple images of her hair and the back of her head now let's jump right in and create some consistent characters I can't wait to combine this with Photoshop to create beautiful illustrations I'll start with generating a character in multiple poses and in different angles to get a character design sheet. For this I write various poses and different angles and expressions of a young girl with black curly hair. Character sheet in the style of children's book illustrations. I usually go with an aspect ratio of 16 and 9 which gives us a horizontal image with room for more outputs of our character and these are the results we got. The character sheets are looking great, I like this one and will move forward with this character. Here is an important part, if you are serious about your work then I suggest cropping each image separately and fixing the deformities and artifacts on your character before saving the image. This will increase your chances of getting better results when you use these images as reference. If it's for your main character and you're creating more than 10 illustrations for your story then I highly recommend this. Another great trick is that you can use specific images of your character for specific scenes. Here I've used these two images as reference showing her on the side and because of that we can create images like this very easily. So for the next step let's generate a new image and use the entire character sheet as reference. This is the lazy way without editing anything. Let's write a young girl with black curly hair jumping over a fence. Then dash dash cref and paste the URL of your character sheet image. You can simply right click and then copy the link to get the URL of your desired image. And here is what we got. Wow, she does actually look the same and this is a really good start. It doesn't really look like she is jumping over a fence, maybe in this one here, but our main focus is on creating consistent characters for now. Another thing which you might have noticed is the style of the images. In our character sheet we had more cartoonish and 2D images of our character, but in the image we got it looks more lifelike and 3D. This isn't an issue, to fix this we'll combine the style reference feature to 
copy the style together with the character into the new image we generate. So let's write the same prompt again. A young girl with black curly hair jumping over a fence. Same character reference image of our character sheet. And now we'll add dash dash sref for style reference and paste the same URL or link to our character sheet image. So we have the same link here twice. One for the character reference and one for the style reference. Let's try this out and see if we got any closer. And here we go. Wow, this is actually really good. I almost want to end this video right here and continue working on my children's books. Now, let's create another image of our character watching a movie and eating popcorn at the cinema. Now, another problem we run across while using character reference is that if there are multiple characters in the image, they will all look like the character we want. This is not a big issue and this is why we have Photoshop. For me, the most important part is to get the right angle, pose or expression of the character. So let's take our beautiful character and just edit the background and add some minor lighting. Simply drag and drop it into Photoshop, cut out the character using object selection which uses AI to do most of the job and let's just fix the details with a little manual work. I generate a new background of an empty cinema for this scene in Mid Journey. I use the same style reference to get the same style as our character. Now for the last step I put it behind our character and positioned it as the background. I completed the rest with generative fill and made the background blurry. Lighting is really underrated and the lighting part might seem a little advanced but it really isn't. I selected an area and changed the blending mode. I could have done a better job on the illustration and have the lighting come from a bigger source but you should get the idea. Another trick that I want to share with you is the zoom out feature of Mid Journey. So most of the images here of my character started with a close-up. This is because in the reference images that we used none of the images show her entire body. It's only close-ups or medium close shots. For example even though I wrote T body pose and full body shot I still got this one here which is a medium close up. Again let's not worry because we have the zoom out buttons in Mid Journey so after zooming out a couple of times we have an image showing more of the body and we can use that. In this case I use Photoshop to remove the background and add the missing hand and adjust it until it looks right. Now for the background I use Mid Journey again and I look for an image of a spaceship in space. I resize our character and make it look like she's inside of the spaceship looking out behind the window. I change the blending mode and add two transparent blue lines that should make it look like a reflection on the window. If you're interested in learning Photoshop quickly, I recommend the link in the description down below. It's made for total beginners with a focus on similar use cases that I've shown you in this video. I did the exact same thing with this image. Zoom out and put it in Photoshop, select the area we want fixed, use the generative fill and it's replaced. Again, if you use these tools properly, you don't need much more to create exactly what you want. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.